we were very aware that a lot of service users were isolated um, and wanted to have a bit of fun. Basically we set up then um, a Zoom and every week we met on Zoom and people spoke about their personal experiences. Um, everybody was different but everyone identified to each other. But well, your head is gone. Is that recording? I don't think that's recording. I'll stop but it. Oh, no, a few minutes ago you said that you weren't recording when we were all just chatting and bantering. Well, yeah. you weren't recording when we were all chatting and bantering. <laughs> Was I? So we got the material down and we found out, like the recovery song, with so much material that we decided everyone should have their own piece and their own story. And then there was a piece I kind of named as In the Meantime piece. So the In the Meantime piece was all about what's going on generally all over the world. So that was decided that was going to be the song. Um, I wasn't kind of sure how this was going to pan out because it was on Zoom. I wasn't sure. You know, when people were coming, if they'd stay, but when the people came, they loved it and they seemed to have got a great experience out of it. I kind of, at the beginning, wanted loads of people, but ironically, now it was perfect that there was only a handful of people because it just makes it just stay happen. This is new to me, especially Zoom. <laughs> How did you manage the Zoom? Uh, very difficult at first, but you, you get used to it. A few lessons from the grandchildren. No, but people bring a lot because people have a lot. There's lots in everyone. Mm. You know what I mean? Did, did, you, did you hear how nice Antoinette's um, speaking and reading was? Like, did she know she was going to bring that? But she brought it. Not only in thought was she can't speak and she's very nervous and she doesn't want to do anything. Watch these films, watch Nolan, watch what she brought. Not only a great story, but look at the heart and the, the, she hates her voice. Mm. You, when you hear her interview, her voice is beautiful it's a beautiful thing so yeah what people bring is important but mostly bring yourself um, every week you could see that each of them growing in in stature really they were growing in confidence and ability and um, there's one or two of the individuals that actually surprised me and surpassed what I ever expected from them and today just watching them there they have achieved a goal I think that's going to benefit them for the rest of their lives. It was like, just as, it, as you were saying, it came at the right time because we were spending so much time and in cocooning, so coming out and about was good. Um, I don't know, every place were shut down and stuff like that, and um, I just happened to see the, the, the Bally Money app uh, on Facebook, and uh, I sent them a message and about, I saw they were having meetings, and stuff like that so I signed up for the meetings on the Valley Money app which was great for me because of where I live out on an island and stuff like that and then that's how I found out about the Corona song and you asked a few people if they were interested so in the beginning I was a bit but I won't I and then I decided to ah, sure, go on and I'm glad I did. Um, well it's for me personally yeah absolutely the self growth um, confidence and um, self-belief they were all shattered you know not so long ago um, and this up this has given me the opportunity now just to actually just reconnect with all that and uh, just let myself be who I can be instead of judging myself before I do that now I just tend to uh, just bite the bullet and go for it and if I'm good at it, I'm good at it if I'm confident I'm confident if I'm not I'm not I can walk away from it then I'd heard so much about kind of the recovery song and the way people had interacted throughout the recovery song and then when I seen the end project then I was kind of a little bit disheartened that I wasn't part of it. So when I kind of heard then that the COVID song was coming up I was like yeah put my name down for it. Go to give it a go and see what it's like. So yeah I really enjoyed it. I would say my social agenda has much improved because I've had to become a recluse uh, because, because of addiction reasons and you have to change your ways, you have to change the people you hang around with. Um, so I've had to start afresh. I mean, I've, I've, I've stayed a loner for about the past six months. It's not a nice place to be in, but when I joined up at Yap, that changed. It takes time, but that changed. and. Uh, the benefits are just incredible, absolutely incredible. Um, so the help I've been given has been absolutely crucial.
to the success. I believe I'll continue to uh, gain from this, and this project is just a start. Great. It's not going to be the end, it's just a start to something new. 40 years in Valley 1. 40 years. You remember yeah. the old community? And I do, yeah. And there was a, everybody helped one another, and, and I think a lot of things wouldn't have happened in Valley 1 only for community spirit in Valley 1 at the time because we had to fight for everything that we got. That, so it kind of brought that back that there was people uh, putting their phone numbers into a letterbox in case you need that and just ring or whatever. Even the kids going by, do you need that and around the shop or whatever. So it kind of brought that bit of community spirit, I think, back into the area, I think, which has been lost over the year. Isn't areas. it strange that, it, you yeah. know, it takes a pandemic, yeah. you know, to bring out, it doesn't only bring out bad things, it brings out good things, you know, good so things. that... The re-emergence yeah. of that community spread and strength and so forth and so on. You lost your sister years ago in an epidemic, in a pandemic, polio pandemic. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about it. Um, she was four and then um, she was taken to Cherry Orchard Hospital and um, I was saying Sunday we, we never seen her again after that so it was kind of, I think that uh, Cold virus kind of brought it all back to you that people were leaving their homes and never seen again. You couldn't go in to see them in the hospital, you couldn't see them before they were buried and those things like that. So it brought back a lot of memories. Window in time. She looks out her window as her sister is taken away. The year was 1956. Seems like yesterday. Heading for Cherry Orchard bound for an iron lung, a child fought for her young life, but the polio virus won. Now she sits by her window and knits, cocooning is lonely and tough. Plenty of time for a reflection, 40 years in this community, the children grown and scattered across the world. Um, our da one daughter-in-law lives nearby, pops in now and then. She's doing the best that she can. She remembers the young community all those years ago. Everyone looking out for each other. My ma said, would you have a cup of sugar till Thursday? And now she sees that spirit emerging again. Community groups, neighbours and friends. Do you need anything in the shop? Or a simple chat at the gate? Her spirit is lifted. She rolls up her sleeves, gets stuck in. She's delivering meals on wheels now. How about this one? <laughs> well, it's just, it's opened my, my mind really to creativity and uh, to start writing stuff and, um, you know, just putting stuff down on paper now and realizing that you can do things that, you know, you, you think you can't sometimes do certain things, but you can. Like, and, it's been good for my self-esteem as well and my confidence. This piece is about a chap. He's not here today. And he was working with Yap, uh, while cocooning during the COVID-19 outbreak. His story is tragic. It's recent. It's true. He didn't want to be here today, but he was very glad to receive his piece. And today we're going to get Ken to read that piece. God, give me strength. Thirty years of drinking, and now the drink is king. The collapsing of a marriage, losing my home. I wander the city streets, now sick, lost, alone. I'm left with nothing, not even my pride. I don't care anymore. There's nothing left to hide. It's a long way down, but I think I found rock bottom. Weak as a kitten, skinny as a rake, at the mercy of God and the city. Throw in pneumonia and a COVID-19 outbreak. Lucky to be alive. An angel took me to hospital. Just when I couldn't care less, others cared for me isolating, cocooning in a safe, protected space. I went for many walks on the beach, having civilized heart 
to heart conversations for the first time in my whole life that I felt that someone really cared for me. I looked in the mirror and said, yes, I am an alcoholic. It's one step at a time now on my recovery. Slowly but surely, I rediscover me. God, give me strength. Um, more self-confidence in myself. Um, I don't fear that speaking half as much. Like when I was online, I was like, oh, the thoughts of having to do this online and half the thoughts of having to give me peace and all. But it just all felt naturally and I was so happy with it, yeah. Well, at the beginning, I was quite shy, and I didn't. I wasn't very much giving me part. But kind of now, I'm delighted that I did give me part, yeah. and I kind of benefit from the, at the end. As I said, I'm more confident. I wouldn't be sitting here normally on the camera. I'm normally quite shy, where it's totally different now after being on the Zoom meeting with the COVID song, as the Corona song I just called it. Um, being on Lion kind of doing that has given me more. What way would I put it? Uh, yeah, more interaction kind of with people and feeling a little bit more better about myself. I done a programme last year of Boxing Clever, which is health related fitness and addiction studies. It's two modules in one. Um, I was a participant on it last year, but this year I went on and I done my peer leadership training and I applied them for a mentor on the Boxing Clever programme for 2020. And I was successful and got the position, which I was very, very happy about. And I'm loving and enjoying doing like it's given me so much strength in myself and so much inner peace in myself. And it's also gave me an awful lot more confidence in myself that I can do this. I've always had a thing for self doubt. Roller coaster, keeping the roof over our head, all bills paid, all children fed. Breakfast cooked, school uniforms ready. Yeah, it's difficult, but it has to be done, you know. Adult learning can be tough. You keep up or you're left behind. And our life chance slips away. I could use more hours in a day, but I'm determined to make it work this time. We need to look, our, look after ourselves as well. Mentally and physically, we need to be strong. Boxing Clever helped me so much, it became my strength. I'm so grateful and proud now to be a mentor, motivating and helping each other. Giving something back, it means a lot. Yeah, sure, we need our little rewards. They make it all worthwhile. I feel like I've earned and deserve something to look forward to. Can't wait for Mexico, a trip of a lifetime. Bring it on. COVID-19, the rug is pulled. Learning becomes distant learning. Skill, homeschooling. It's hard to box clever on Zoom. The trip of a lifetime gone. Lockdown, sure is tough, but in some ways I'm afraid to go outside my door. My immune system, my immune system is low, so you know. And that scares me. Sometimes it gets a bit much. We're tripping over each other. Jesus Christ, if I have to go up them stairs one more time. Bang. It is, it is reality happening. I'm reading to a strangely empty church. Privileged and heartbroken all at once. The death of a loved one. Not really a proper goodbye. Everything is inside out or upside down. At the end of the day. To be honest with you, it was like being on a roller coaster. If I hadn't got my friends calling in, even if they had to bring their own cups. If the kids didn't knuckle down and get amazing results, if I didn't pass my level six, I couldn't be a mentor in my group on Zoom. But do you know what? I did. We all did. We all stuck together. But good, good. I heard you went mad, thank you. I had to do something. I had to do <laughs> something. Um, I wasn't standing in the queues for that long anymore for toilet rolls. Right. So uh, I found a bit of paint in the shed and I just turned everything from brown to white. So I went a bit crazy. But it worked. It kept me busy. <laughs> What else did you do? Like, were, you, were you playing the um, good guitars? So. I picked up the guitar again during the COVID. Um, I haven't been playing now for geez, it's a good 17, 18 years since I really put any heart and soul back into it. Right. Um, so the, the project that came up, um, I picked up my guitar and um, I just found me, I suppose, me love for it again. I suppose right. in the couple of weeks that I've been on this project. Yeah. If I'm stressed at all and I take out the guitar, it just goes away. Absolutely. It's just the actual process of, of just takes you to a place to... where you know nobody else has been before. Yeah. Only yourself. Absolutely. And you stay there for as long as you want. Yeah. And then when you're ready you come back out. Yeah. And then, you know, the problems that you went in with it are sort of halved on your way out. Magic. You know, so it takes you away already. Yeah. 
Lovely. You were going to go and see a big concert this year? I was, I was. I was going to see Lewis Capaldi this year. Yeah. But uh, instead, I went shopping at Aldi. <laughs> <laughs> Little Aldi and Capaldi. Outside the window, the garden looks like Stephen's Green. Nothing left to cut or prune or weed. If it stands still, it's painted. One coat or two. Stand still for long enough and he'll even paint you, most likely why. He lingers in a queue in Little Araldi when he should be standing in line to see Lewis Capaldi. He doesn't really need that many toilet rolls, but he gets them just in case, so you never know. At last he makes it home to his partner and children. This lockdown has brought them so much closer. He strums his guitar and thanks his lucky stars for all that he holds near and dear. I'm sure maybe Capaldi will come back next year. Yeah, I mean, the good thing about it is, is that as a group, I think everybody is going to gain something from this. And uh, the people who have really hard times, they, they won't need to worry because as time goes on, it's only going to get better. Once they stick to, you know, the tools we've been given from, from YAP, I'm just over the moon. I can't express how happy I am about it. It's great, absolutely great. And the staff at YAP, I have to say, Every one of them have been crucial and brilliant and just thank you all very much for your help. It's been wonderful, yeah. What do you do on the audit? What it was in the summers now there was something? Um, I have a little tea and coffee shop that uh, I run on the island and uh, just sort a couple of months during the summer just to meet people and um, chit chat and have a cup of tea, have a cup of coffee, have a scone, have a slice of cake. And it's more about being social and socialising with people and I love listening to people's stories, where wow. they're from, and that kind of, because you meet a lot of nice people. In my recovery part, um, I would spend a lot of time down on the beaches, you know, just to get peace of mind, listen to the sea coming in, and I just start picking sea glass, and I picked a whole black bag full of sea glass. So this is called the Wild Atlantic Wave Splash Bowl. The lighthouse. Outside her window, a strangely still Inish coffin. No boat on the horizon, no tourist on the way. No morning rising, no early morning rising, no scones baked today. No cade meal of fogia, no footprints in the sand. No rush, no tea or coffee, no cafe. She fills her hours now making soaps and magical sea glass vases full of hopes. Lately armed with tea and pen, she sits and writes for ages. She pours her heart and soul onto the pages. Shining light, standing tall, she is a beacon for us all. Um, this next piece is about a lovely lady who was with us on the Zoom part of the project. But unfortunately, um, she had to pull out of the project. But she did want her piece read. So um, it's, it's a very poignant piece. It's a very powerful piece. And I think you can see from the circumstances in this piece that um, this COVID-19 outbreak wasn't the same for everyone. Lockdown wasn't the same for everyone. And Cara is going to read that piece for us now. Outside her window, in the lane beside her house, the monster bikes are revving and roaring. They may as well be inside her head. A baby girl, four months, is screaming on the bed. This lockdown has her in a spin. She feels like the walls are closing in. Another handful of hair, does anybody care? She needs to talk, she needs support. The diagnosis phone call wasn't long. The doctor said he doesn't know what's wrong. She feels trapped. Done. But now I have a lot of songs that I've wrote over the years. Um, I've never played or done anything with them. So this group was after re reigniting that fire in my belly pull these old songs out and uh, maybe make some music to them and go sing them to somebody that wants to listen. Um, just the, the confidence going forward that the day when I sort of played the guitar in front of a couple of people, um, sober and wanting to do it, that sort of just, there was a little spark there that said, yeah, I can get this back. You know, so that spark then, that turned into a fire yesterday when we played the song for the first time. And, I felt complete then, yeah, this is what I need to be doing. So that feeling then, I bounced out of Yap yesterday with that confidence it back in me then, you know, to, to go forward and stop doubting myself before I say no to things. Um, the biggest thing they can bring is themselves, as in participation. 
and that's not just to be there. Um, you don't have to sing or dance or write or do backflips. There's no requirement. You just have to be there, and then we'll see what you're interested in and maybe what you have to offer. So this group knew that they were entering into something. And they knew there was a Zoom aspect to it, and that there might be some writing, but they didn't have to write. They could just listen or say words or give input that way. I mean, maybe the people who are not here are, are, are really in my mind today, and they'll be in my mind for a long time. The lads, if Leighton plays more guitar and brings the workshops that we've done into his new songwriting going forward, and if Ken reintroduces himself to music, that's what I carry forward. Uh, that's what I bring away with me. That's how I measure success, you know. Oh, I think it's great. I'm actually privileged to be part of the group, and they're an amazing bunch of people. Uh, anyone I've met, like they're just amazing people, and uh, it just goes to show you, like, there's so many good people out there, like, and and you know, and, and what we can all do together. Like, I didn't know these people, and I only met them maybe today for the first time so yeah it's been amazing I've made new friends and everything. Brilliant I loved it at the beginning I wasn't really hopeful for, not that I wasn't really hopeful for it I was hoping it would go to plan when I kind of seen the end product of it today I was like amazing amazing loved it I'm having a great day. Uh, when, when it was mentioned that we were putting a, a group together and there was a song being written I jumped at it because uh, I thought this will be this is the ideal thing for me and when I got involved in it, it was like absolutely amazing. Uh, Pat and Leighton have been absolutely fantastic. We've been, it's been a solid unit from the start. We've created a song out of nothing and uh, rehearsed it and it's worked so well. I've been, I've been actually walking on air for the past few weeks and it's been so exciting and really enjoyable. And uh, it's got me back working now. My, the old grey matter is working again and I'm delighted with myself. Uh, so I hope people enjoy the song, and it's it's been it's been a wonderful journey, I have to say. Yeah. No, uh, no frills. We're going straight into it. And on the four, are we good? Yep, we're good. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Thank you. 
Moon Youth Action Project would like to acknowledge the support given to us by Pat Denham. We'd like to say thank you to the Access Centre for allowing us into their building during these very challenging times of the COVID-19. A huge shout out to the participants involved for all the hard work they've done.